Hey everyone, it's Tango Oscar Mike. I've seen people shoot videos in their kitchens, in their living rooms, in their ham shacks. I have a bar, so I'm going to shoot my video in the bar. I want to talk to you about APRS and uh, what I've done so far. Um, after the last video, I said I was done with APRS, probably wouldn't be doing any more, but I was encouraged to ham harder, so I did give it a try. And I purchased this. This is the uh, MobiLink D. This was the TNC3. Now I've already had this open. I've already done a test with this. This is it. This is the device. Uh, pretty nice little device. Uh, seems really well designed. Very small. Very easy to use. I bought two cables with it. One for my radio, which is a, a Wushan or Oshan uh, KG UV9D. And I also bought a cable that goes to my base station, which is a Yaesu FT857, but it also works with the radio I have in my car, which is a Yaesu FT8900R. So to hook this up, it's pretty simple. You charge this up via USB cable, uh, connect it. Let me get the cable out and I'll show you here. Use the TRRS plug, plug it into the back of the device, plug it into your radio. And that's, that's all you need to be able to do APRS in the field. Now, <laughs> I did have some luck with the whip antenna, but not a lot. Uh, it worked a lot better when I used a roll-up dipole. So it depends on the area you're going to be using this at or trying APRS in. My area, there's not a lot of APRS stations. Um, other areas, uh, I know APRS is huge and uh, there's APRS coverage all over the place. Plus here in Pennsylvania with our rolling hills, um, even repeater coverage can be spotty. My county has five repeaters all interlinked around uh, just so we can get good coverage because of the rolling hills. And even then, there's some places where I'll go down into a valley and have no repeater coverage. Uh, it's just our terrain. Other terrains that are more flat, you don't need as much coverage and your APS coverage might be a lot better. Now, what I was using uh, before I got the TNC3 was a Raspberry Pi. I had to have a power cord for the Raspberry Pi. And for my, for this radio, I had made, this isn't it, but I had made a cable to try to adapt from the Raspberry Pi to the radio. And it worked. Uh, it probably didn't work well, but it did work. Um, when I was using my base station, I was using the Raspberry Pi, power for the Raspberry Pi, and a signaling sound card. So. Uh, that's a lot. Uh, it was kind of messy when I was doing it on my base and I tried this in my mobile rig in the truck. Uh, I also had to add a USB uh, GPS module and a long USB cable uh, so I could get GPS signal in my truck uh, or even in the house. I had to put this over by the window. But that's a lot. So it works. If you wanted to use this as a Digipeter. Uh, now let me say this is not this is strictly a TNC. It is not a GPS device. It is strictly a, an interface, a TNC interface between your radio and your computer. Now when I'm using the mobile, uh, using this with my mobile phone, the computer is my phone running and uh, APRS Droid. It uses Bluetooth to get GPS signal and everything else all from the phone. Uh, without a phone or another computing device, this device doesn't do anything. You could use this as a digi digipeter with your home device by simply using a Raspberry, pairing it with a Raspberry Pi. Now, the TNC3 has a feature that the TNC2 did not have. And the TNC3, uh, or the TNC2, I should say, you could only charge using the USB port. Um, on the TNC3, you still charge using the USB port, but it is also a serial emulator. 
so I can plug this into the device, plug the other end into my Raspberry Pi, and then I can access this device serially. Now you can also do that over Bluetooth. Uh, your Raspberry Pi can also access this over Bluetooth. Um, but I thought that was kind of a nice feature. But this and um, your radio is pretty much, well, of course the cable, is pretty much all you need to run a Digipeter. So that, that's a lot nicer than trying to run a signal link. And I can tell you it's a lot easier to adjust the volumes on this um, than it is using a signal link or um, trying to use a USB sound card. So I really like this device and I, I have had some success with it. So I did have problems with this. And the problem was you put it in a pack, the power button, the power button was very easy to press. Uh, it gets pressed, it turns on, and you pull the device out and it's dead. Um, that happened to me and I've seen other people make uh, a little plastic cover for this. I think the Tech Prepper rubber band, a little plastic cover. I did that and the device was still turning on in my pack. And then I found that I could turn the device on just by squeezing the case together. So without touching the button, I could just squeeze the case and it would turn on. Now, I did have to squeeze that a little bit hard there. Um, I contacted the manufacturer and they said, oh, the case is screwed together too tight. Just loosen the screws about a quarter turn and that will take care of the problem. Um, it helped the problem, but it didn't take care of the problem. Now, I could always carry a USB cable. That way, if it turned on in my pack and was drained, you know, I could always charge it up with another device to, so I, I wouldn't be stuck have some redundancy there that's that's one of the reasons that I am returning the, the device I did talk to them and I am going to return the device the the other reason is GPS the, the whole purpose of using APRS is so people could track you and if you have, if you're going out on a hike or something like that but to do that and use a radio like this because this plugs into the speaker mic jack it occupies the radio so you can't monitor voice channels you would have to carry two radios. I think if you really wanted to do APRS, uh, my recommendation, if you're on a budget, go for this. You know, buy a spare uh, Baofeng radio and carry two radios and then you have your APRS tracking and you're monitoring the regular um, FM uh, voice channels at the same time. If you have the budget, buy a dedicated APRS radio like the Yaesu FT3DR where you could, it'll be doing APRS and you can still listen to monitor other channels. Um, my base radio, the same with my base radio, when I plug this in to my base radio in my truck, which is an 8900R, it has two channels on it so I can listen to two different frequencies and I can do that so I can use this as uh, APRS on one channel and be listening to the repeater system on the other channel. The problem comes in when I wanna transmit. If I switch to the repeater channel as my main channel, the packet interface on the back of the radio also switches over to that main channel and will broadcast. If I'm talking on that channel and the APRS sends a signal, it'll broadcast over that channel. So if I'm gonna talk on voice, I have to make sure I turn this off and uh, turn it back on when I switch back over to that second channel. Even though it's a dual channel radio and can listen to both channels at the same time, APRS is very cool. Um, I did have success in the field with this um, when I didn't have success with the Raspberry Pi and the sound card and everything else. Um, I was able to send a text to my wife through SMS gate and she actually was able to reply to me and I got the message back. So it was good. Now. In the video, I stacked the deck. I went to the highest spot I could find and I took a roll up J pool. And that really helped uh, with my signal and my coverage. If I was in a valley, I probably still wouldn't have any luck with APRS. Uh, I did try using, I had the APRS hooked up to my radio, tracking me the whole way I walked through this park, which wasn't a deep valley, but I did not get any signal, uh, no reports or no tracking until I got up to that very top hill. I did get a packet out with the, the whip that's the aftermarket whip that's on my radio. Um, but 
until, but if I set my radio down on the ground or something like that, then no more packets. So having an external antenna that you can put up in a tree while your radio sits on the ground is very beneficial. So that's, that would be my recommendation. Again, very nice product, very well designed, except for the power issues. Um, I wish the signal link was that small um, and this easy to use. Most of this inside this case is air, it hasn't been uh, altered in many, many years or redesigned. Um, I would like to see this in a format like this so you could take it portable because um, we all know for emergency situations in MCOM, they do like to use digital modes. It'd be very nice to be able to have something like this um, to be able to run FL Digi and uh, the, all the NB EMS or uh, narrow band emergency message service software. So again, it's nice, it's a good unit. Other than the power issue I had, maybe the one you get will not have that issue. Um, I don't wanna bash the company. I think they've been very good and uh, have done a very good job. Um, when mine came, the battery was dead. I don't know if it was because it was squeezed in the box or not. Um, but again, it's a good unit. It's packaged nice. Um, but I, I don't think I'm going to keep it for my purposes. I just don't think it's going to work out. I did give it another shot. I can get a German InReach satellite tracker. I've seen the German InReach Mini on sale for as low as 250 That does come with a monthly subscription. Um, but it's almost a guaranteed getting, I'm almost guaranteed to get a signal out uh, via satellite than I am with APRS in my area. Um, APRS is definitely has more features. You can spot yourself with soda uh, activations. You can also spot yourself now. I think it's still in beta, but you can spot yourself for POTA activations. Um, but yeah, it's definitely... Um, APRS is definitely the, the cheaper if you live in an area that has good APRS coverage. But for me, I think I may look at a satellite tracker uh, going down the road because I am going into other areas. I, I have some other trips planned. And when I look at the maps there, there's literally no DigiPeters anywhere around uh, down in, in West Virginia or up north in northern Pennsylvania. So that, I think that's all I have. The comparison of the different ways to do it. Um, but if you had a choice between this and the Raspberry Pi and everything else, I would take this in my phone. That's definitely a much smaller option. If you have the money, I would recommend getting a dedicated APRS mobile. Uh, uh, Kenwood makes one. Yesu makes one. Uh, I don't think th those are the only two. I think Anytone has, makes one, but I don't think you can. I think it only does beaconing. I don't think you can actually do two-way messaging on that one. So... Well, that's my experience with APRS, uh, and I think I'm done with APRS for now. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you enjoyed my learning of APRS and the benefits and the drawbacks to the different areas you, you may live and the different coverage and stuff like that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. This is Tango Oscar Mike, 73. Take care. Tango Oscar Mike.